for you. Essential two, I'm gonna briefly buzz through this, but as a chiropractor, I have to. I wanna, I wanna explain a couple quick things that just, so you can maximize your results in here. Mix, fix, set is what happens in the clinic all the time that you probably don't realize, and it was one of the questions here, like why do we all use this wobble? Okay, why do we all do the cervical traction? Does everybody come into the office and do the same stuff, right? These are, these are good questions, but when you think about why this is, this, this tool here um, pumps nutrients to your brain. So I want you to think, gravity's a force that pulls everything down. Don't you think it's a little bit difficult to get, again, get fluid from my feet back up, right? And this is why we see swelling in the feet. Okay, so how does that work? Well, the mechanism that actually pumps nutrients to your brain via cerebral spinal fluid is this guy here. Meaning, if God wanted this to be a solid structure and we wouldn't move from here to here, guess what would happen? We would be built that way. The fact that there are individual movable segments, and even if you can get a little bit of motion, you know what you're doing? You're activating pumps. The discs are the pumps. They soak fluid in and shoot it straight up. When you shoot fluid to your brain, this is why you, a lot of times you guys just wobble, you start feeling a little bit better. You start seeing a little bit more clearly because the three directions the spine moves are side to side, front to back, and twisting, right? And I always thought, I mean, again, when I started, I was like, this is the silliest thing, but probably the most <laughs> powerful tool that people, that we don't realize. And, and the more they study it, they're, they're, they've, they've found that it does something with the ligament that's connected to the heart, that it massages the heart when you do wobble. There's a bunch of different benefits to it. But it's amazing, guys, if you just think every single morning, every single day, and whether you get on this or not, but take yourself through those ranges of motion, here's what you're doing. And this is what, where the mixing comes into play and why I have a piece of taffy there. The way I envision it is when we wake up, or even just throughout the day, if we're sitting long periods of time, we're very stiff. And so cold pieces of candy or taffy, hard to move, very brittle and breaks, doesn't it? But if you heat that taffy up just a little bit, what's it turn into? Like putty, it moves very easily, okay? So when you guys walk in the doors, guess what we want you to do first? Is take your stiffness, your rigidity. Sometimes you guys will go through ranges of motion or, or the cervical traction, you'll pop, you'll unlock. That's not bad if you're controlling it, right? If you're doing this, you want Dr. Randy or Dr. Allison in doing that, right? Because they know how much force and what direction and, and, and being specific with where that force goes. But if you're within your range of motion, taking yourself here and here, that's where you live to just keep that fluid going. If that segment needs to go past that, that's where professionals come into play. That's where chiropractic came from, okay? And very specific chiropractic in the sense that if you go to a chiropractor that doesn't take x-rays or looks at your spine, I personally wouldn't get adjusted by them. So you can see the level of certainty and the level of analysis that we do to analyze where that energy should, should be dri driven. So the two things that mix the spine in the clinic are the wobble and the cervical traction. The cervical traction just takes, again, another thing gravity is forcing us down, you're taking and you're decompressing. So taking the discs, that are out there, and the sponges are actually fairly uh, a good uh, resemblance of what disc tissue is, that sponge that squeezes down throughout the day with gravity, you're just taking that and pulling it apart and bringing it down, pulling it apart. And that's cool because as you dip, your neck curves. And we'll talk about the curves briefly here for a second but mixing the spine. Now, fixing the spine, you can't do at home and you can't do it by yourself. That's where the adjustment comes into play. So now that you're nice and movable and you lay it on the table and you take yourself out of gravity, now we start adjusting the spine, we're fixing the spine. And now that we've fixed the spine, guess what we wanna do? Set it into position. Now we wanna strengthen it in what we just moved, right? And I'd say that's a big separating factor of, of generic chiropractic, like the McDonald's version, and then what we do, okay? Meaning the, the fast food version of chiropractic is, yeah, come on in, lay down, pop your back, twist your back, hope you feel better, come back when it hurts. Guys, that's not, that's, that's like using your cell phone as a hammer. That's not, uh, you can, but there's so many more benefits to your cell phone than just hammering uh, a nail in. So mix, fix, set, very important. The set for the most part, to, to visualize that and think about that, usually requires some sort of weight or strengthening or vibration, okay? So we want you upright and around. And anybody realize why we use this? 
Like, and why a lot of people have to use a head weight to go back to like why are there's very similar patterns that occur in the spine. And you know, the most common one is forward head posture. In fact, in the 10,000 plus x-rays I've taken in my career, I've maybe seen less than 10 that didn't require a head weight. Why do you think that is though? Yeah, guys, everything we do, yes, is this, right? And now it's getting worse. We're seeing it younger and younger because of technology, because of phones, because they're not moving as much. Um, so that's one of those things that, and I always thought the reverse. When I started learning about headbutting, I was like, wait, we want the head to go this way. Why are we putting it here? Because wouldn't that make people do this, right? So let me just so you realize, here's what we're training. We're training the reaction of the weight. Does that make sense? So I'll give you a, an easier way to, if I throw a weight on my shoulder, if it's too heavy, I fall over. That's not a good reaction, okay? So that's why some of you, we tested with an extra x-ray to see about the weight. But if I throw it on here, my body can tolerate it, like your guys' purses and bags, what does the body do? It brings it up. And so this is the reaction. So I'm actually, when you guys put a purse on, depending on how you do it, so sometimes a cross strap does different things, depending on the weight does different things. But if you put it on here, you are always the same shoulder. You're training every day, every day. And then we take an x-ray, what's your shoulder, what does it look like? This. And the body starts to shift, right? It's very, you know, it's very straightforward. So this trains a reaction. You put weight here and the body can tolerate it. The head comes backwards, pulls it back, holds it there. So when you take this off, guess what your head feels like? Ah, light. And the head can now easily stay back. You change your posture. And you guys have all seen it. You walk into nursing homes and you see the posture and position of the people there. It's because nobody talked about this, right? So be conscious of your position. Now, real briefly, I want to, I want to use this diagram that I have on the whiteboard and show you something else that's cool. So going back to principles and us not knowing very much about the body, right? We do know that the nervous system controls all function. Now, we don't even know how much of that or how, how it does it or, uh, again, the billions of things it does every millisecond, coordinating your heart with your liver, with your pancreas, with your toe, with everything. All the sensations that are coming in, it is just a master mega computer, right? So it gets a lot of input from our body. So think of it as there, there are signals that come up from our stomach up the spinal cord to the brain, from our heart, from our lungs, from the liver, that are going to certain parts of the brain. And what the brain's doing is it's interpreting and it's sending signals back, fair? Okay, and again, I'm just gonna go super simple on this, but it's, it's, it's interesting because this is why this is the number two essential. Once you understand that your belief matters and what you think about matters, then you have to understand how the body actually works. So if, if you look at the heart, and let's just use the heart. Every single day, cells die inside of us, right? And you guys know this because skin cells, those are cells that you can easily see. They die, they flake off, right? But there's still skin there, isn't there? So what happens is, when cells die, what, what does the body remake? More cells. More cells. Beautiful, right? Nice system. What coordinates the remaking of those cells? In conjunction with every other organ of the body. Give you a clue the brain. Generally the answer in the office always is brain, spinal cord, nerves, so that's an easy one for you guys. But this coordinates the function. So I want to just show you something really interesting. So every day, let's call it a hundred cells, even though it's millions, but a hundred cells die at the heart. That's just how, just life, right? They're dead. So then it sends a signal to the brain and it tells the brain how many cells does it need? 100. So the brain makes 100 cells. If the signal from here to here is functioning at what percent? 100%. What if it isn't? What if that signal's at 70%? What if that signal's at 50%? Cells are still dying at 100 a day, okay? Millions a day, but 100 a day in this analogy. If there's blockage somewhere here, somewhere here, anywhere between this nerve going from the heart to the brain, if there's blockage anywhere, that creates some percentage of uh, deficiency, then the brain hears the heart needs 50 cells. What's the brain gonna do? Recreate 50 cells, creating a deficit of what? 50 every day. Day one, not a big deal. Day two, maybe not a big deal. Week one, not a big deal. Maybe month one, not a big deal. How about year one? How about five years? 
And then all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute, I didn't change anything in my diet. I didn't change anything in my lifestyle. My genetics have been my genetics, right? But all of a sudden I'm high blood pressure, arrhythmia, murmur, heart disease. And then what's the doctor do? We go to a specialist that looks here, right? And they're not lying to you, because this is what's interesting, guys. They care about you. I, I never want you to feel like I'm anti-medicine or medical doctors. I take care of medical doctors. I take care of nurses. We take care of everybody in that world. They just don't talk about health, right? They're great at disease, crisis, surgeries, pharmaceuticals if needed. They're terrible at health. Here's where it comes into play. This now has been in a deficit of 50% for, call it a year. The heart's going to look terrible, right? whether it's clogged, whether their valves aren't working. So they're gonna say, we see that you have a valve issue. We see that you have a blockage of ABC, right? Their solution though is to do what? Is it to remove the blockage here or is it to try to force this to do its job? And that's why guys, I always struggled with medicine and surgery. Now again, if we screw up for, we don't, and we don't know about this, we screw up for five, 10, 15 years and the heart's shutting down, you got to do something, right? If you want to stay live, plug, pull this thing out, plug in a new one, whatever, but you still got to get to cause. And that's the one thing we always want patients to think about is when doctors give advice, did they talk cause? Did they actually get into why your heart is doing what it's doing? I'll give you two things to not accept. One is genetics and one is old age. Those two things you guys can't control because we're all getting older and you can't change your genetics per se. But it's an easy cop out for doctors to say, it's just your genes and it's just your age. And the reason I say that is there are people that are older than you that don't have it, that eliminates age. And there are, pe there, there are newer studies now that they're finding that we get to control our bad or good genes. And that's epigenetics, if you guys are familiar with that terminology. Think of, epi so here's what, I'll just briefly touch on epigenetics and, and actually we'll get it, I'm gonna touch on that in the cell. That genes, if you think of it as, let's call it, there's good and there's bad and it's a light switch, okay? And there's, there's the whole DNA code of that. So I, I, like, I like to um, think of them as blueprints. So it's like, all right, here, if I'm gonna build a house, let's say, there's a, from a shack all the way up to a mansion. Blueprints, right? I don't want the shack that has no plumbing and it's terrible and you know there's no heat and no, and, and again, I'd like the ideal mansion, if you will, right? So call it mansion, shack. The body has to signal what gene to express on the same code. So if we're expressing a lot of shack or bad genetics, that's what our body's building. Does that make sense? And it goes back to this. When those cells die, and, the, and say this, this signal's even clear, and it's building 100 new cells, who's saying that those 100 new cells are great cells? You know, where, you know, where then, you know what comes into play here, which we'll talk about next, is the third essential, which is nutrition. Because if you're giving the, the, the body now, McDonald's, Burger King, and Dairy Queen, to rebuild those heart cells, it has to rebuild them, and the pathway may be clear, but these are junky cells. Henceforth, you start triggering more and more bad genetics. Is that fair? All right, so you can see the tangents that I, that I will tend to go on. So I put a safety pin clip up there just so you can kind of think of this or visualize this. The brain to the body, body to the brain. If it's connected, it is a well-oiled machine and the body's doing what it's supposed to and we don't need to know specifically what it is doing, but we know it is doing it because this is our master doctor. It's the best doctor you have outside of me. <laughs> and then the body is going to be sending signals back and forth, which is excellent. Okay, so I want to touch on that. Now, real quickly, uh, spine, and, th and then I'll, en I'll end this segment. We'll get into the, what you guys probably came for, which is nutrition and fitness. Um, structurally, engineers came or figured out, let's put it this way. Again, math didn't know this. Engineers didn't know this thousands upon thousands of years ago. What are the strongest angles and structure, structural uh, features? And so what they found was an arc is an extremely strong structure and a very specific angle arc, which is 45 degrees. When you guys drive over bridges, do you generally see what? Big arch. Guess what those engineers build the bridge up with? A 45 degree angle. So at some point in history, again, math figured out arcs are strong. Guess what God knew when he built you? 
Arcs are strong. Straight front to back, curve from the side, three curves, three cervical curves. So engineers did, get, did, did look at this and find that the way the spine is designed, which of course, because the master designer designed it, there are three perfect curves that make up your spine in an ideal position, right? If we can maintain that from birth to death, we keep our body functioning very well. So I think of it as structure determines function, function determines health. So if I have structural integrity, why we all continue to get adjusted and continue to get adjusted the rest of our lives is to maintain our structure, remove interference to the body, and let the body heal. If I'm removing interference, I think of it as that blockage is gone, interference is free, now the body's gonna do its job neurologically. Cool? What if you have spinal fusion? Spinal fusion is a whole other world, right? So now you gotta deal with the cards that, you're, that you were given and you do the best. So you stay mobile in all the segments that are still mobile and you just keep pushing the boundaries of structural integrity. So that's where limitations come into play with whether it's ankle surgery, spinal surgery, elbow surgery. If we've altered the, the design, then we just want to keep mimicking as close to the design as we can get and still enjoy life as best we can with it. Any other questions on that? Nobody generally has spinal questions. <laughs> <laughs> Assist your healing. I, I just put this in here, guys. So this is toothbrush and floss. There's home stuff that you can have and, and utilize that we sell. Uh, head weights, traction units, wobble cushions. Some of you guys have some of this stuff already. Rolls to sleep on. Um, avoid undoing your, your um, so we hit this. Avoid undoing your, your adjustment. And I'll touch on this, I guess, best pillow by being conscious of your position all day, every day, as best you can. So in other words, and, I, and even on the video that Dr. Randy's been playing on uh, uh, our CFC TV, is if you can stand in the right, in the position, that's the position you should sleep in, sit in. So think of spinal health being straight front to back, hips are level, shoulders are level, and then from the side, head over top of your shoulders, shoulders over top of your hips, all the way down, right? So this, isn't efficient. Like if I walk around and sit like this, what's my body and back gonna start doing? It's gonna start screaming. The muscles aren't set up for that. But so what we do throughout the day starts to compromise position. You can't be perfect in this, okay? I look at spines all the time. I'm not perfect at this by any means, but I wanna point out a couple things. Texting's a big one, computer stuff. So again, lift it up. Keep your spine neutral, sacrifice shoulders, right? Versus spine. Sleeping. Pillows weren't designed for side sleep. So to, to answer this question, there isn't a best pillow. The body was designed to technically sleep on its back, and if so, and side, but if you sleep on your side, all you need is something that fits the width of your shoulder. So your best pillow is a pillow that keeps you lined up like this. If you tip me to my side, if I don't have a pillow, this shoulder here and the bed is gonna make my head do this all night, right? But if you tuck a pillow in here that can keep me neutral, like you see here, that's this guy's best pillow, whatever that is. So it's more of a width thing, and if you have a spouse or a significant other that can look at, like you're laying on your side, do you look like this, do you look like this, are you curled up like this? Those are things you can kind of see. Now other stuff to, to be conscious of is, of course, purses and wallets and different things. Yeah, like I realize women don't carry purses anymore. It's like luggage that moves, like I don't know what you have in there, but like you're bringing your life around and carrying it on your back. Now, this is the other thing too, with childbirth and, and um, ligament integrity, carrying babies, and, and you can see how post-pregnancy a lot of stuff happens because your body uh, widens and kind of relaxes everything for birth then it constricts back down. The problem is you're lugging around a bag, a baby, a car seat, and everything starts to shift. And as it constricts back down, we start seeing issues. Men usually run into the wallet issue, where if you keep something in your back pocket and you're sitting, it acts as a, uh, a wedge that starts to create curvatures. So, and anybody, like gloves, I've seen a lot of people that drive long distances, that's a, that's a big issue there because one, you're pressing a pedal, so your hips are already shift, and then two, now you have a wallet, depending on where that is, it creates a lot of issues. The, the billion dollar idea, I think, is if you can create a car that's ergonomic. There isn't one that I've seen. <laughs> so if you want me to look at your car, there isn't a seat that I've found that works well for spinal position. So it's tough because truck drivers are probably 
some of the worst spines I see, and that's up there with you know football players. So for a man, they just put their wallet in the front pocket. Yep, front pocket or throw you know throw it on the dashboard. Just never sit on anything. So every time I come to work, empty everything out of my pockets. That way, if I'm you know sitting, I'm sitting as level as I can. And I guess I, I'll give you a trick for cars. When I sit in the car, I sit down, and you know how cars kind of have like it, it's kind of um, like a bucket. I wiggle my butt <laughs> and I just wiggle it to try to get into like, all right, this is neutral. And then if I go long distances, I try to use cruise control so that I can put my feet flat as best I can. Because you can see this position and then if I'm kind of up on the edge and I'm leaning or leaning this way, think about what's happening. And then the subtle vibration of the car is making the spine adapt. It's a big, it's a big one, it's a big deal. Okay, so food for thought, be conscious of your position. And as I mentioned, for back sleep, why I, I didn't touch on that, side sleep, pillow the width of this. Back sleep, if I'm laying on my back, there's, those, there's a curve here and a curve here. So that's why we recommend towels or rolls where you put one here and you put one here to support those arch, arches. Otherwise, the back can sag. So if this is the arch position, you know, I'm on my back and I don't have a support here and a support here, these can kind of sag and flatten out. Now, what most people do is they lit, sleep with two behind their neck and their necks like this all night right and then they have sleep apnea and they can't breathe and it's hard to sleep and they snore and so you can see how this is a big one so if you can work on getting that curve and opening that up and no pillow is better than a pillow on your back you didn't realize you guys are gonna get so many tips today huh <laughs> The roll's amazing. And guys, once you adjust to sleeping on the roll, it's super uncomfortable to put a pillow behind your neck. You start realizing like, man, that's, how did I do that for years? Okay, so stopping point, just write something down. It, it might be guys, you're gonna do your spinal exercise every day or something for your spine, stretching, wobbling, moving, just any little thing like that. I always try to do that before I do anything. Get the circulation pumping to the brain, nutrients to the brain, oxygen to the brain. And see, what you can see is, at if you know, and I'll give you a classic thing here. When people retire and they stop moving, like they used to work and they were moving and shaking and everything was great, and then they retire and like, what am I gonna do? And if they sit more, they don't have that motion of the spine, and guess what they start losing function of? Brain, dementia, Alzheimer's. So I, I look at a lot of that stuff as like, it's actually just lack of motion that started to occur, that started creating brain health issues, okay? So change your work environment, stay consistent with your adjustment schedule. I say, I, I used, when I used to adjust, I was down at, we, we, we adjust every year at Winter Jam, you guys familiar with that? So they have us come backstage for all the Christian bands that come into town. And so I made them do spinal exercises even, even on tour.